Hello students, in this video we'll prove Dini's theorem. Dini's theorem states the following, states that if Fn map k into R are continuous functions, for n greater than or equal to 1, and k is a compact set, Then, if f n converge pointwise, to a continuous function f, k into r, and the sequence f n is decreasing, that, then this, is, this says, of course, that the sequence is decreasing. Okay, then Fn converges uniformly. So I go from pointwise convergence to uniform convergence. Then Fn converges to F uniformly on K. So I can upgrade from pointwise convergence to uniform convergence if the functions are mapping of our, our compact set and if the functions are decreasing, okay? So what we know is we know that each of these f and have to be bigger than or equal to f because the sequence is decreasing. So that's, that's going to give you the observation of our proof. So here's the proof of Dini's theorem. Okay, let's let epsilon be greater than zero and define new functions, define functions gn, which map k into r. And what are these gn going to be? So gn of x, gn of x is going to be fn of x minus f of x, that limit function, okay? So now these gn functions, these are automatically continuous, so these functions gn are continuous because they're the sum of continuous, the difference of continuous functions. And my goal now is to prove that gn converge uniformly to zero, right? So I'm gonna, my goal, prove that gn converges uniformly to zero. That's going to be our new goal. Because if gn converges uniformly to zero, then this thing converges uniformly to zero, and that means that fn converges uniformly to f, okay? So how are we going to do that? We're going to do the following. So what we're going to do is we're going to define sets omega, define, note first, so note, note, note what? Note that g are decreasing functions as well. Note gn of x is bigger than or equal to g n plus 1 of x. And that's because f n is bigger than or equal to f n plus 1. So in other words, the g n are decreasing as well. So the g n form a decreasing sequence. Okay, that's going to be important for us. And now I'm going to define sets omega. So define omega n of epsilon. And what are these sets omega n of epsilon? These are the sets of x and k such that gn of x is bigger than or equal to epsilon, okay? So this, of course, is the pre, this is, of course, the set where we're bigger than or equal to epsilon, so this is a closed set, so this is a closed subset of a compact space. So this set over here, so omega n epsilon is a closed subset of k. It's closed by the continuity of g, by the continuity of g. Okay, so this closed subset. So now, what can I do? If I look at the intersection, now let's consider, uh, let's consider the relationship between g n epsilon, omega n epsilon, and omega n plus one. Epsilon. So what's the relationship between those two sets over there? Well, let's see. So as n gets bigger, if I increase n, this gets smaller, which means it's harder to have that happen. So this is going to be like this. 
goes like that. It's harder because everything, if you're in GN plus one, that means that GN plus one, so in other words, if GN plus one, because we have this relationship over here, look at this. So if GN plus one is bigger than equal to epsilon, that's gonna force, that would force, if that was the case, that would force GN to be bigger than epsilon. So if you're in this set, then you're in this set. So these sets are nested. So I have nested compact sets. So let's suppose, so nested compact sets, these are nested compact sets. Okay. All right. And so now what do I know? I know that gn of x, as n goes to infinity for a fixed x, let me fix an x and k. If x is in k, then what can I say? Then I know that gn converges to zero, which means that if gn converges to zero, eventually for that point x, eventually for, for some n, that says that x is not in omega n epsilon for some n. Okay. Excellent. But now that means that the intersection, the intersection n goes from one to infinity of what? The intersection one to infinity of these sets omega n epsilon there's no, so every x is, in not, is not in any of them. This is an empty set over here. This is empty. But we know that this is the, if this, if this went on forever, I know that the nested, inter, for a complete metric space, I know that the intersection of a nested sequence of compact sets is, non, is necessarily non-empty, but this set is empty, which means that one of them, if, there, if all of these sets are non-empty, then the nested intersection of them will be non-empty as well. So that says that one of them, so by the nested interval property, I know that, or the nested compact set property, I know that there has to exist an n, this implies that there exists an n, such that what? Such that omega n epsilon is the empty set. Now, what does that mean? That means that G, for some n, gn of x is less than or equal to epsilon, right? So in other words, I can find an n for every epsilon. I can find an n such that gn of x, so on that set, we know that gn of x is less than epsilon, right? And that's gonna be true for all, since it's decreasing for all n past that, right? So we've just shown that if n is bigger than or equal to that value n capital, the n for which these sets are empty, this implies that g n of x is less than epsilon, which shows that g n converges uniformly to zero. So this says that g n converges uniformly to zero, and if gn converges uniformly to zero, that says that fn converges uniformly to f. So the key feature of this is that if you have non-empty nested compact sets, their intersection is automatically non-empty by the nested, nested compact set theorem. So we know that since this intersection is empty, that means that one of them in the sets, at some point, I have to have an empty set so the intersection is empty. Thank you very much.